Focus, good morning to each and every one of you and welcome to FYI. It's the 10th day of October already. For your information, folks, the 10th day of October, and we hope you're so much closer to those dreams and goals and objectives, aims and aspirations than you were when the month started, folks. We drank at the end of the year. I still reflect on my New Year's resolution and I hope you guys have as well you didn't discard it one side because you're you know you're in with the in thing when the year starts you make all these things you have no no hope of fulfilling <laughs> you have no hope of fulfilling i watch it mine every day and look how far we've come and how far we've still got to go but good to have you folks here with us for the many places you're joining us from this morning Vanessa Wardine is with us clear capel and others debbie collins what are you guys having this morning do let us know Mm-hmm. We got a couple Lipton here, folks. Yep, yep, yep. And the the label of it says um take time to bask in the brew. Mm. Taking some time at this end, basking in that brew, good folks. Welcome, as we said. Evelina Whitaker, what are you having this morning? Dion Ayana, BB Sandy Ford, what are you having this morning at your end? Fennel Innes is with us. Yolanda Thomas is here as well. And she says, I'm having oats. Yeah, 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 yeah. Lovely, lovely, right stuff. The stuff of champion. We're happy that you guys are here. Innes Bidon is with us, and Amita Carroll, Edward Brooms is here. Always saying, keep Sue Gates alive. Yeah, yeah. Living Room Sue, or Walcott is here as well, and Beatrice Selby, all of the other folks joining us this morning. Laverne, Harichiran, Kelman, Pussart. Same person. What? One person, lots of names. Guys, good to have all of you here with us from the many places that you all join us from. It's such a privilege being here with you folks. I share the live as we come on, smash that emoji button as well. We got a couple of things to get through this morning, good folks. We got a couple of things. Gilali Cock is here as well. Donnett Harling George is here too. Good to have each and every one of you. Wherever you're joining us from this morning, we're privileged, of course. Randy Cole is here as well. Randy, how are you doing? Randolph, how are you doing at your end, my brother? Pace and power all the way. Clear Alexis Charmley. Richmond is here with us as well. Beryl Crawford. Good folks. Good folks. Good to have you too. I see Ann Singh is here. Samo Williams is here as well. Karen McPherson is here with us too. Good to have all of you guys. Amanda Kendall is here too. Trying to keep up with the comments, folks. Trying to keep up with the comments. Too many screens to watch the all in front of you. Carol McPherson, June, St. John Posad is with us as well. Good to have you on this morning, June. And Tony Fraser is here too. Glenn Wosley is here. Good to have you, Glenn, and all the other folks joining us this morning. What are you guys having? Thanks for joining us for breakfast this morning. What are you guys having? Oats and what else? Ginger and some other things. Good to have you guys here with us this morning. Eva June is here with us too. Eva and Brenda Moore. Siobhan McDonald is here this morning, guys. A number of things, a number, number of things we're following in the morning papers. A number of things in the morning papers today we want to share with you folks. But welcome, Ann Singh. Welcome. Uh, Dion says she's having some chamomile tea. Yeah, yeah. Doesn't chamomile kind of um, mm, settle you down a little bit? Kind of sedates you a little bit. Chamomile. Uh, wonderful stuff. Either way, Kyle Bino is here too, and uh, I guess I said Yolanda is on the live too. Lots of other folks joining us this morning. Folks, share the live for us. Uh, smash that emoji button. We got a number of things happening at our end, good folks. A number of things happening at our end that we want to share with you. Wonderful folks, a number of things in the morning papers. A number of things that we want to get you. Straight away, good folks. So welcome to FII, all of those folks who are now joining us. You're now joining us. You're now rocking and coming. Quite a few things in the morning papers to share with you. Debbie Collins says she's still in bed. Folks, when I get bigger, I want to be like Debbie. I want to be like Debs. You see? When you got it like that. You see? You got it like that. You could be in bed at eight watching us. Yeah, I want to be in bed at eight watching somebody. Marcy Agard, Beryl is here with us. Good morning, Debs. I'm happy that you are relaxing. We got Audrey Stevens is here as well. Andrew Griffith, of course. 
Andrew, thanks for the things, Andrew. Thanks for the things. Good to have you with us. Uh, Marcy Agard, Hansing, Debbie, Audrey. Uh, all you beautiful folks. Lyndon Jones is here as well. Good morning, Lyndon. Beatrice Selby, of course. Beatrice Selby, of course. And Beatrice reminding us. Donald says, heads got to roll. <laughs> folks, if heads got to roll, heads got to roll, we want us to do. Heads got to roll. That's what the Donald says. If that's what the Donald says, good folks, is what the Donald says. Heads got to roll. Let's get into some of the things we're following in this morning's papers. A lot of things we're following, guys. A lot of things are making the news around our end. Ronaldo Cassius is here. Malika is here. Good to have you, Malika. Yolanda Thomas is here as well. Good to have you, um, Yolanda. And all the folks who are joining us this morning. All the beautiful, wonderful folks joining us this morning. Again, we are very, very privileged and happy to have all of you guys uh, join us on the live. Shauna Fortune, we see you there, Shauna. Lyndon Jones, Edward Brooms, we see you as well. Who else we got this morning? Diane Johnson, we see you too, Diane. Malika Andrew Coates, Andrew Coates. <laughs> Double surname. Double. Love it. Love it. Diane Johnson, as I said, Barbara Ralph is here too. Lynn Finance. Lynn, why have you been such a stranger? Why have you been such a stranger? I miss our old friend, Lynn. But come around more often, please, and thank you. Good to have you, Lynn. French, Mr. French, we see you there. We'll see you there on the live, Mr. French. See you there on the live. Kyle Bino is with us as well, and other folks joining us from different places. Folks, wherever you're joining us from this morning. Quite a few things to get into, and I think we're starting by the AG. Let's start by the AG this morning because it's been a fantastic win for Winston Jordan. And I really want to slow down here. I hope he's joining us this morning. You know, that's a fellow that does life his way. He's at that age and stage in life where he gets to do things his way. <laughs> and we love it. We love it. He might, he might be in bed too watching us every day. Recliner, good morning, former Minister of Finance. Congratulations on this fantastic win. You know, fantastic win. And this is so important for so many reasons. It is so important for so many reasons. Neil Harding, were you there? I was there when they dragged, literally dragged, the former minister before the courts. They didn't believe when he took ill. They didn't believe that. The child was a sham. And they insisted, you know, the aim of this installed regime is to embarrass, to bring down, you see, to make, um, um, what is the word, diminutive. See, when you're buying your books and so on, your dictionary and so on from our sins, uh, to make diminutive, de minimis. And I wrote this morning, boy. Margaret Nelson, good morning to you. Michelle Justice, good morning to you. Shelly Kadagan, we see you. So that is the aim to reduce you to nothing. And that is what they sought to do with Winston. And that is why, folks, for us, this win in the high court is so momentous. Right? That's why it's so momentous. Because God don't like ugly. And I say it all the time. I say it again this morning. Politicians especially factor out God in this political space. But I understand. In him I live. In him I move. And in him I have my being. You can't factor up the almighty. I don't care how much money they got. I don't care how much hit men they got. When Jesus says no, no man can say yes. When he says yes, no man can say no. When he opens the door, nobody can shut it. <laughs> and so this one is so important because the men to pull down the former minister of finance. That is what they sought to do, Debbie Collins. Right. Living life on their own terms, Debbie Collins. Isabella Butters, you know. What was the aim, the motive of the powers that be? They don't want nothing that's good for us. 
quite like the devil. They don't want nothing that's good for us. No. <laughs> Imagine if they could treat Donald, Dolly Anderson, the way they want to treat Donald and sing. Their own compatriot, their own comrade. How do you think they can treat Winston? They can treat Winston any better. And that's why I'm happy for Van Vistrad, but I'm sad for Van Vistrad all at the same time. And our brother Carl, happy and sad all at the same time. Everybody in this country, things tight, the sun hot, you gotta eat your bread and drink a little water. But in the final analysis, as the good book says, Randy Cole, Gil Alicock, Luan Hall, the final conclusion of the whole matter is that they don't want anything that is good. For us, on this side of the aisle, who might have a differing opinion? They don't want anything that's good for you. So those are some of the things we contended with. Folks, as you know, this case concerning Nissil and lands that were given from Nissil to BK Construction in the city, legally vested lands, legally vested lands. Of course, on August 2nd, 2020, the PPP's Progressive Party were installed into office. Installed. And they systematically started going after their foes, political foes, using any tool available. And one of the weapons of choice was weaponizing the courts. And that is the weapon they trained that former Minister of Finance, Vincent Jordan. That's the weapon they trained against him, weaponizing judiciary, bringing all kinds of cases. How many cases has the AG lost since? If I'm going to sit down and now start rethinking this whole thing here. Remy, Lisa Remy, Papa Jagabat and the others, they're going to sit down and start rethinking this whole thing here. You can't get an AG home with nothing. It's just not tellable at all. Margaret Nelson, <laughs> Margaret and the love vex, 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 and true. Yeah. Andrew says it looks like the PP regime don't want nothing good for Afro Guyanese. Unless you're willing. Unless you're willing to join them. I think you're onto something there. Yeah. Unless you're willing to be used, Andrew Griffith says. I think you're onto something there. Chanel Smith Daniel says they need to be voted out. Luan Hall says one day the table is turned. Yeah. Neon Harding says the AG reading the law books upside down. Vesta Hardy Rajkumar says they will surely reap what they sowed. Nothing goes unpaid. See that? Those are some of the commentary. And so the AG wasn't contented. He was not contented with the pronouncement of the as the code document says the learned trial judge he wasn't contented when the learned trial judge set aside this matter dismissed this matter and awarded costs to jordan in the high court two million dollars he appealed to the high court the attorney general he wasn't satisfied he appealed the matter to the full court who has recently handed down its decision. And Justice Joan Barlow and Sandil Kisun, justices rather, Joan Barlow and Sandil Kisun, delivered the judgment and the decision of the full court. And one of the things, in their words, Amabel Clement, they said this was an unmeritorious appeal but what else can we get from a gentleman that the caribbean court of justice said he brought the entire 
administration of justice, administration of justice into disrepute. What else do we expect? What else do we expect? The full court of the Supreme Court of Juridicature, or the High Court, to put it simply. <laughs> it's a fancy, a fancy name. The Supreme Court of Juridicature, give us a little more oomph, says the Attorney General, the Chachuri, Bright Boy Anil, brought an unmeritorious appeal. But it looked at his, at his application. He said he didn't bring nothing new that he brought before the court in the first instance. Nothing new was added. That's what's in the document. Nothing new was added from the chat tree. And we've always said, he is a chat tree and John, Amabel Clement, Siobhan and Sandra, Van Van Classic, we should chat four. But I, mean, I fancy myself as a chat five. Debbie Collins, Michaela, <laughs> Michaela, Andrew Coates, Sandra Jones. I fancy myself as a chat five. Where's the where's the Doris? But what is more interesting to me here? Again, congratulations to former Minister of Finance. Oh, we could use Jordan back now. With the way this economy going, eh? this economy more hot than this heat wave. Heating up more hot than this heat wave. Inflation. Very large public servants had a raise every year on the former Minister of Finance. We had a raise. Public servants could depend on a raise. Improve standard of living. Uh, improve. And I think the last year of office, inflation was 0 0.9. Father, Jesus have mercy. If Ashni get inflation to 0 0.9, they'll be applying to um, Oslo for Nobel Prize for Economics. Ashni Singh. Winston Jordan brought inflation to 0 0.9. What does that mean to the ordinary man? It meant the little you had in your pocket could do more. And we didn't start spending oil money as yet. 0 0.9 inflation without oil money. All the sectors, it's nice time. You know, paying public servants a little more every year so we can have more to go around. And as he admitted that office, you know the results of the recount and the installation. He started advising the parliamentary opposition. And that is what they didn't like, Elizabeth Dorian. And so they went after former minister Winston Jordan to muzzle him. That's what they sought to do, to muzzle him. Once you can join them, they seek to bring you down. They can say you rape, you thief, you're a bandit, you're a beggar. They sought to muzzle him by attempting to weaponize the court. But the court didn't take weaponizing. The court says the Attorney General's case against former Minister of Finance, Winston Jordan, was unmeritorious. And has awarded him 2.5 million dollars i saw it's not us huh? uncle jordan <laughs> you all know he's my uncle yes he's my uncle you know this program open for contributions eh? people who've come into um recent lump sums and so we open for contributions eh? 2.5 million and rightfully so and rightfully so. And John, Melissa Monroe, Margaret Nelson. Huh? And Margaret put it so beautifully. Margaret, he had zero points. <laughs> he wants to make a dollar out of zero points. Gotta be grassmatics. Margaret, Elizabeth Narayan, 
Amabel Clement, there's grassmatics he's dealing with there. So the high court dismissed this matter. But let me see, let me show you business. Remember, this phrase, unmeritorious appeal, is a phrase that was used by the full court. The full court of the Supreme Court of Juridicature. I want to give it the preeminence it deserves. The full court of the Supreme Court of Juridicature set aside this unmeritorious appeal and said, Winston, you see, for your time, take 2.5 million. That's not bad payday for me. <laughs> That's not bad payday for me. You see? I noticed the same fellow who defending all of these um, fraud charges against about electoral fraud and so on, bringing these charges, prosecuting these charges. And he was one of the lawyers for the learned AG. You see, this uses term learn very loosely. Uh, very, very loosely. He was one of the fellas here too. In this matter. He is one of the fellas here. I have noted that from the court document. He was one of the fellas prosecuting Winston Jordan. No. Right? And he's also prosecuting Valder Lawrence and um, Carol Smith, Joseph, among others. Right? Darshan Ramdani. He is one of them here who brought this matter. But I want to show you the hypocrisy. Hold on. This is going somewhere. Hold, hold a second. I want to show you. <laughs> I want to show you the hypocrisy with the folks we're dealing with. All right? I want to show you that. Yesterday was the ninth day of October. And the state paper, the Chronicle, published a headline. I want to show the hypocrisy. And the header the title, the subject of this article, I can't get my money's worth from that trip overseas, eh? So I, I, I got to keep my little accent. The article, the header, the subject, hear what it is. Frivolous legal cases draining judicial resources. Who says this? The Attorney General, frivolous legal cases, according to the Attorney General, draining judicial resources. And in this article, the Chronicle, the Chronicle says, Attorney General and Minister of Legal Affairs, Anilandilal, Senior Counsel, has raised serious concerns over the increasing numbers of frivolous and vexatious legal cases being filed against the state and has called on the courts to award appropriate costs when dismissing such matters, which according to him, are wasting valuable judicial resources. That's yesterday. In the Chronicle, Again, I want that sink in for you. The AG, Minister of Legal Affairs, the chat, the, the chat tree, the chat tree, Anil and Lal, senior counsel, the learned attorney law, raised serious concerns over the increasing number of frivolous and vexatious legal cases being filed against the state and has called on the courts to award appropriate costs when dismissing such matters, which according to him 
are wasting valuable judicial resources. That's according to him. Frivolous and vexatious. But what he should have added was also unmeritorious. Because the matter that he brought, Margaret Nelson, was frivolous and vexatious. And unmeritorious in the words of the full court, of the Supreme Court of Juridicature. That is what the court said. We're not making these things up. Abira, I want to thank you for that donation. Abira has made a donation to our broadcast on our YouTube channel. In the comment section, there's a dollar sign at the bottom there. And you hit that dollar sign, it asks you to purchase a sticker or something like that. And part of that purchase comes to us. Thank you so much, Abira. I'm certain you've been able to help us to keep online for another day or so. Thank you so much, Abira, for that contribution. And folks, there's a number of ways you can contribute to our program. We're going to share that with you in just a little bit. So here, in the one hand, the learned Attorney General put in uplifted comments. The learned Attorney General says, he's advising the courts. You see when they bring them cases against us? Huh? And you dismiss them? Huh? A word? Hi, hi. Costs. Big, big damages. Hi, hi, costs. Big, big damages. Margaret said you need to hang up your gloves. You need to hang up your gloves. <laughs> so he's advising the courts to do that. When they bring vexatious, when they bring frivolous matters, unmeritorious matters. And here he is this morning. Mind you, he was asking the court to award millions of dollars, hundreds of millions of dollars, should Winston and Jordan be found guilty? All of that aiming to bankrupt the former Minister of Finance, weaponizing the courts to bankrupt political opponents. But the court didn't fall for it. The court did not fall for it. And again, Justice Joanne Barlow and Justice Sandil Kisun delivering the decision of the full court of the Supreme Court of Juridicature said that Nandalal's arguments were unmeritorious. Huh? Ah, them big words you like without using, frivolous and vexatious, sanctimonious, huh? all them unmeritorious. But again, folks, what do you expect from a gentleman that the Caribbean Court of Justice, in his own deliberate judgment, just like the Supreme Court of Juridicature in Guyana, said he brought their entire system of the administration of justice into disrepute? Same fellow Lovern, Joseph, Randy Cole, same fellow Dolly Anderson, Abira, same fellow, P. Alicock, Amabel Clement, same fellow. That's what the CCJ said. That our AG, our Attorney General, brought the entire system of justice in the distribute. The former AG, at his worst, was never condemned of such. And this bright boy, this statue, the learned Attorney General, brought the entire system of justice into disrepute and quite recently the high court of the supreme court of juridicature says i see nothing new here with this appeal you bring unmeritorious unscrupulous frivolous vexatious all the us <laughs> and as margaret nelson said in the chat a short while ago he should hang up his gloves Hang up his gloves. Hmm? Hang up his gloves. Kind of like this lot thing I'm walking out. 
Like this lot thing, you get all the law books, you know. You can get all the law books. And if you don't understand what's happening in them, it don't put you in no place. You get played bright, and then you get bright, bright. <laughs> Look, I sat in a law class. The final thing I say about this matter, as we switch gears, I've been on it long enough. I sat before um, the likes of Justice Duke Pollard. No. Duke Pollard is from the old school. Bright. Right? Bright. Bright. This is them like 40,000 LED bulbs. Lights. Bright. He was a justice before the Caribbean Court of Justice. That's not no easy fit. How many Guyanese have done that? Deshi Bernard, Duke Pollard, who else we've had before the Caribbean Court of Justice? This man was worth his salt, worth his weight in gold, as we say. Duke Pollard, like my spiritual mother. That gem I shared with you last night with people who born man. All of she said is born man. Some of us grow out of it, yeah. You put it had a similar gem. And many years ago, I'm sitting in Duke Pollard's class, looking at this bright Caribbean son of the soil who happened to be Guyanese. Retired Caribbean court justice, served, served at every level locally, and in the pinnacle of his career, served as a Caribbean court justice. He said there are two types of people in this world. Looking at a class of young and brash students of law. Nothing has changed. He said you got two types of students in this world. The student who can tell you, I went to saints, I went to QC, I went to bishops. Right? That's one type. I said chat three. I went to queens. That's one type of student. He said the other type of student, Savannah Page. Dolly Anderson, Aubrey Stevens. He said the other type of student. Hold on, let's take a sip with you. Duke Pollard, God rest the dead. He's gone on. No. Duke Pollard said he got two types. One type of student. The first type. It's like Nan Lal. I went to Queens. I said chat three. <laughs> I bright Island bishops and roses. And he said there is the other type of student. Audrey Stevens, I hope it's you. There's the other type of student, Sheila Boy Child, who when he or she opens his mouth, and as Kemal Jatan says, begins their argumentations. Tommy Gibbs. You will ask, which school you went to? The only boastful said, I went bishops, I went here, I went there, I went Huey, I went Harvard or Stanford. And they got the other type. When they begin the argumentations, you will ask, is which school you went to buy? <laughs> which type of student are you? Which type? Which type? You Pollard, years ago, I think he was lecturing us international law or something of that nature. Something of that nature. I think it was international law. Deliver that gem. Two types of students. Which type is none? Which type is here fun? <laughs> that ain't no expert. Done no export. Then I gotta move on. You see, one trip to Washington can change a lot of things, you know. Hey, well, you all know that. One trip to Washington. Amanda Daniels, Wade Doris, Maria Vera, Isabella Butter, Jude Cameron, Michelle Gary. One trip to Washington could change a lot of things. Right? One trip. We've learned that the 
uh, Guyana Trade Union Congress was invited to make its budget 2024 submissions. Mark Phillips was there as Prime Minister and some other ministers, they told us, at the office of the Prime Minister. And of course, of course, veteran trade unionist Lincoln Lewis represented the Congress, Guyana Trade Unions Congress. And one of the things they're pushing for is the abolition of personal income tax. You got to pay out so much of your money when you get it. You know, they ain't giving you no increase. And this is one of the taxes you pay on your salaries. Personal income tax. Among other things, Lincoln Lewis asked for. Right? This was one of them. We should have to pay personal income tax. Abolish that. And also, the Ghana Trade Unions Congress, as represented by veteran trade unionist Lincoln Lewis, they asked for provisions of unemployment benefits and, according to Sabbat News, a raft of other measures for improved living standards. Right? Sabbat News says, that the GTUC took pains to remind the government that the engagement was not superficial, was not superficial. This is a first. And what Lincoln Lewis was saying, don't do this for photo ops. This is not about photo ops, but that it should be meaningful. Right? Because, you see, they've been talking inclusion and they're looking for photo ops of them working with different segments and sections of society that don't usually agree with them. So they can run to Washington and say, you see, we've been talking to the Guyana Trade Unions Congress. They've had differing opinions, very strong, differing opinions than we've had. But we've been working with them. You see, we're an inclusive government. And we have to underscore that. Engagements of inclusivity must be meaningful. Don't just go and hook up with a couple afro guyanese and take out the picture and say, oh, I see everybody. But when you look at the policies, who gets what? Who goes where? You see, things look very different from that standpoint. And that was the point Lewis and the Ghana Trade Unions Congress, they were making, I say, right on, good folks. Brenda Haley, right on, right on, right on, right on. <laughs> you think things are bad by you? In this one Guyana, where everything tight? You think things are bad by you? Look, story here. 70 Venezuelan war house were found living in one house in Tushen. One house, 70 people. I your tea. 70. In a house like that, folks, when meals being served, you can't close it. I am praying, you can watch. Watch and pray. Close your eye and pray. Can we give them to plate? The one the plate was raptured. 70 in one house. 70. You know, when I was growing up, I used to hang out with some folks in a particular part of the city. And my friend, still my friend now, one day he pointed a house in that community. He showed me this house. Amanda Daniels or Erwin Dunn. 
He said, look, you see the house there? It's so much of them living in that house. Right? To turn around, it's got to come outside. Turn around. Outside where they got space, like in the yard, and then you, you go inside. There's so many people in the house to turn around. You got to come outside. <laughs> Uh, he said so much of them in there, Cheryl. They sleep in shifts. You know, beds to accommodate everybody. They sleep in shifts. And the house had about 10, 15 people. Now, could you imagine 70 persons in a house? Hmm? 70? <laughs> Folks, I thought they had it a little tough, but I just realized it. <laughs> like God be blessed. I thought they had it tough in this one day, I know. You know, barely making ends meet, trying to get along, keep these programs going. 70! <laughs> 70. Gil Alicock, how many by you, girl? <laughs> Bella Mona, how many by you? You cried out, huh? Kevin Cook, how many by you? <laughs> Kevin says, this is the Venezuelan barrack room. <laughs> this is the Venezuelan barrack room. You're not wrong. This is very, very worrying to me. It's very, very worrying. Right? Because this is how the invasion will happen, you know. Incremental buildup. Right? Bella is only seven by she. Right? But if you add on a zero, you buy them. And how much by you? Morris Toby, Randy, Waveney Doris. <laughs> Margaret Nelson, how many by but I know how much by Margaret. I know how many by Mar Margaret. Angelie, how many by you? Lover and Jose? 70. Right? 70 by them. My God. It makes you rethink. <laughs> it makes you rethink your lot in life. It makes you rethink your lot in life. Margaret says only two by she. Rena Mingo says four is good enough by me. <laughs> Nobody else will come. Right? Four is good enough by me. Yeah? Beatrice said, how much by you, Beatrice? My God. How you feel? 70, that's the... How much money per month? Mm? To feed 70? My Lord. You wake up every day pulling out your hair. Right? Pulling out the hair. Pulling out your hair. You thought you had things bad. You thought you had things bad. A man was on a bridge. They told us it's a true story. Man was on a bridge. Ready to take his life. So he eat my last banana now. My last banana. And that's it. I ended it all. Nothing left to live from. This is all I got. My final banana. You need this? Call it a day. Whatever happened, happened. You didn't tell to plunge off the bridge on the road below. I jump off here now. That's it. Punch of final. Final conclusion to the whole matter. He stood on the rail of the bridge, peel the banana, he threw it through the skin. See, that's it now. When the skin fell, a man ran out and grabbed the skin, he it up. You think, you think things bad by you. When the skin fell down, a man ran out from under the bridge, grabbed the skin, and consumed it. Man on the bridge said, well, I thought I did bad, but apparently. <laughs> you had to change your mind. You know, that could have ended like Raman, who we spoke of in the program last evening. Right? He could have still fall down and break your neck. He changed his mind instantly. You think you had things bad, but you had 70 by you. <laughs> uh, 
Look how Margaret got nice time by her. Look how Margaret got nice time by her. Margaret says she could take 68. <laughs> Margaret got the mansion, folks. You should see Margaret's spread. That little video we did at Margaret's home and she invited us in. We stopped by, she invited us in. That little video, it doesn't do justice. If you see this spread, you see? Living the American dream. She got your 40 acres and her mule. <laughs> she got your 40 acres and her mule. So when Margaret said to take 68, she alive. And comfortable too. House, food and clothes. <laughs> food, clothes and house. She's 68. 70 in this house. In Zeeburg, it's not, um, I saw the notes just now. Zeeburg is where they're, 70 folks. Ganesh Maipal, member of parliament, over the weekend, released a statement. A number of big, huge government contracts, way behind schedule, valued at millions of Ghana dollars. Millions upon millions. All of them. I don't think any of them were over 25% completion. Way behind schedule. Way, 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 way behind schedule. Folks, Ganesh got powers. Since Ganesh talk, heads rolling. Heads rolling. Folks, since Ganesh released that information, this pump station at Black Bush pulled up. They tell us was terminated. When I get bigger, one will garnish. As soon as you talk, heads roll. Government terminated the contract for the Black Bush Polder pump station. Incidentally, all that he has highlighted were um, issued on behalf of the National Drainage and Irrigation. Authority, the NDIA. Right? And that particular contract, for instance, was valued at 700 and sorry, 978. The single contract. 978 million dollars. And imagine if that didn't come to light. See? The contract would have lived undone. Money gone. Money gone. He raised about eight or nine of them. And they're telling us that extensions have been granted to a number of the others for various, for, for various reasons. A number of extensions. But this one for Black Bush Polar. The contract has been axed. See how we got to stay on them, boys? Hmm? Pursuing the truth wherever it leads. I want to thank MP Ganesh Mahipal. Eh? MP Ganesh Mahipal. For pursuing this matter. It's not finished yet. You got to stay on them. But he brought it this far. Right? Brought it this far. Because you know what? We want what is best for the guy needs. And you got to keep scrutinizing, pressing them for better governance. All of these contracts languishing. And then they're going to come and talk about good governance. Good governance. Good governance. We feel it for those folks on the East Bank. That East Bank Road in the vicinity of Diamond Grove. That road is very innovative now. Simulated waves and not mild waves, you know, high waves. So you're going on the road. About four contractors given that project, it changing hand to hand. None better than the previous one. And every two mornings, a will run up there, read the right, right act. We ain't tolerating this, and we ain't tolerating that, and no more money, and no more extension, and then more money, and another extension. And the road don't finish yet. 
The road didn't finish yet. CPL was here months ago. Now, this last big match and finals they had, months ago, or some cricket tournament was here, and they recapped that whole road. No sooner those matches concluded, the road fell apart. They at it again. Since then, they're trying to fix it. And there's been a number of similar contracts like that. Gone way beyond the time. They keep pouring more money into it. Sports Hall is one of them. Sports Hall is one of them. The contract is some woman. She, something with the money, the gushing court now. Subcontract something for glass and all kind of madness. Friends, family and favorites. Barmia School. Bird Nest is a litany of these contracts. Far behind schedule. Millions have already been expended, but nothing to show for it. And then come and preach good governance. We care. That's why we give in just to a select few. So we can get we kickbacks. But again, I want to thank MP Ganesh Mahipal. Because it's because of his hard work in these areas here. You got this termination, this contract this morning. And if he said nothing, guess the gun quietly going on. Spending out taxpayers' money, teething out taxpayers' money. Right? Teething out taxpayers' money. This is the result of the hard work of MP Ganesh Mahipal. Right? Yeah. I want to say congratulations this morning. We want to say congrats. So Ambassador Michael Brotherson, he was honored. The ambassador was honored uh, quite recently, they tell us. Um, I think this is in New York. Want to make sure we get it right. He was honored quite recently in New York um, for service to his community. Service to his community. And I say, folks, it's an honor that was justly deserved. I know if you get bad now, but as a matter of full, as a matter of full, I want to make sure I get it right. Yeah. As a matter of full dis disclosure, um, Michael Brotherson used to be one of my lecturers when I was an undergraduate at the University of Ghana reading um, communication studies. Yeah. And I graduated. I you fall out here <laughs> too. For graduated. Uh, from communication studies, and then I went on to do law, and I graduated too. Graduated too. So we saw Senator Kevin Parker of the New York State, Se Senator Kevin Parker, bestowed this honor. This is a prestigious recognition on Ambassador Michael Brotherson, Consulate General of the Cooperative Republic of Guyana, of course, there in New York. There in New York. My, I know Mr. Brotherson. I know if he changed now. I know if he get bad. But he used to be a fantastic fellow. Very lighthearted, very jovial. Not the pomposity that some of them get these positions and title. Let's try to move with. Always grounded. You know, put on the ground. Naomi Drucker says, Whatless man, Brotherson. Well, I know it all. I know it all. I think. <laughs> oh. Naomi has clearly had a different experience with Ambassador Brotherson. Clearly, clearly, clearly. But I want to say, well done. Well done, well done, well done. It's my former lecturer. I say, well done. That's the man I know. Fantastic lecturer. Always knew his content. You know, I got some lecturers, you don't think, you don't do certain about them. No, no, he always. Knew his content, knew how to deliver, and never wore that chip in the shoulder. I said, big boy. And he was always in the um, front of his, a career dip diplomat. And give service to the University of Ghana. I knew for people like brothers, it wasn't the money. Right? It wasn't the money. Give service back to the University of Guyana. Right? <laughs> Pamela Dobas Pamela Doba said he repented Naomi. 
He repented. Randy Cole says, Naomi had 2.5 million last week coming your way. Watch yourself. Watch yourself, folks. Let's touch on some things quickly before we wrap up this morning's program happening internationally, folks. You see that conflict there between these two um, entities, countries, Israel and Palestine. Father have mercy. Well, the reports tell us that Israel put on a bombing on the Gaza Strip where 2.5, uh, over 2 million Palestinians live. You know, we reported last night that lots of them were fleeing uh, to um, international refugee camps in that area to avoid the shelling. Israel, they tell us, this, uh, this is one of the pictures coming out of that, has left this area desolate with the amount of firepower. And we were reading Reuters early on. And let me see if I captured it correctly. They said in the 75 year history of conflict, this has been the fiercest airstrikes in this region. Right? Fiercest. Listen to the story here. Folks, they got evil in this world, you know. Right? Ayatollah Khomeini says the Iranians kiss the hands of the attack planners. Yep. The leader, the spiritual leader of Iran, he says, we Iranians kiss the hands of those who plan this attack. Israel, for its part, says, and vowed to take, quote-unquote, mighty revenge on gunmen who rampaged through its tongues, leaving streets strewn with bodies in, by far, the deadliest attack in its history, over 1,200 persons. Lost their lives when Hamas launched this attack on Israel. The 1,200 Israelis. Iran says it kissed the hands of those that launched, that planned the attacks. Yep. Kiss the hands as Israel vows mighty revenge. The pictures there to prove it. Desolation. In this region where about 2 million plus, 2 million plus Palestinians live in the Gaza Strip. A desolation, folks. Folks, this is where we are in our world today. This is where we are. Wow. Wrapping up, folks. So what's happening around the region? Tianjin and Venezuela getting together. We are on the cusp. One report says... They're on the cusp of joining forces to fight crime. And this is um, transnational organized crime to combat uh, human and narcotics trafficking, uh, trafficking rather, human and, and narcotic trafficking and migrant smuggling. They're combating to do that. And this is according to Minister of National Security in Trinidad and Tobago, Fitzgerald Hines, told Parliament recently. Yep. Working together. Who allowing we cocaine to pass? Who are we joining forces with to fight organized transnational crime? Huh? Who can pay for that two billion cocaine that was intercepted quite recently? The Venezuelans, the Trinidadians, they want to stem the tide of organized transnational crime. This um, trafficking in human and narcotics, migrant smuggling. They want to mitigate, eradicate, if possible. Yep. Who are we joining forces with? Hmm? To prevent them billions in cocaine from passing. Who? 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 Question could be asked. And I want to touch on some other stuff quickly, folks, as we 
circle back in the five and two. Couple of things you should know this morning. AG again, AG again. Drastic measures needed to rein in reckless road users. And we can agree here. Meritorious arguments here. Meritorious, drastic measures needed to rein in reckless road users. Yep, let's work on that. Let's work on that. They also want civil forfeiture, right? Cryptocurrency and financial sector discussed, uh, discussed at uh, assets recovery workshop. Those who are involved in crime and you're convicted, they want to come after your property. Yeah, better come off a crime. Come off for crime. You're involved in organized crime and you're convicted. They're coming after your hotels and your fancy vehicles and all of that stuff. Right? That was discussed at this asset recovery workshop quite recently. Yep, yep, yep. And finally, folks, finally we're getting an advisory. Finally, we're getting an advisory. And this is, uh, they're telling us that grass and garbage they gave an advisory on this quite recently let me make sure i deal with it um yeah during the dry seasons the probability of grass fires is greatly increased they're telling us citizens are rushed to desist from lighting grass or garbage fires at this time if these fires do occur they should not be left unattended as they possess the potential to spread and become major fire emergencies Report all fires as soon as they occur to the fire service via our toll-free number, 912. Call the fire service, they say. 912. Follow these steps to control and prevent grass and garbage fires. This is for properly burning uh, grass or garbage. Find other means of disposal and clearing. Uh, disposal and land clearing, rather. Never leave grass or garbage. Fire unattended. These fires can quickly get out of control and spread rapidly. Report last grass or garbage fires to the fire department immediately do not throw cigarettes or cigarette butts on the ground or out of a vehicle dispose of them properly make sure they are completely extinguished be mindful of parking on dry grass or shrubs educate children about the dangers of playing with fire keep a shovel a bucket of water a fire extinguisher and other suppression and other fire suppression tools on hand that's what they're telling us. That's the advisory, folks. That's the fire advisory this morning. Yep, yep, yep. In addition to that, folks, finally, finally, they're telling us uh, persons are trying to impersonate the first lady. Quick social media comes. I've been spotted trying to impersonate the first lady. Yep, that's what they're telling us. This is from that, folks. Please and thank you. This is from that. Why are you all trying to impersonate the first lady? Why, 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 why? What good could come of that? What good could come of that, good folks? Stop. Stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it. Stop trying to impersonate the first lady. Yep. <laughs> and they've um, highlighted some of that. Put it out in the public domain. Stop trying to impersonate the first lady through these fake Facebook's, Facebook accounts. I know it'd be like fake accounts. You know? But if you have to say, say to people face to face, you know? As you, people go through all these accounts and they come and abuse you up and cuss you out and all manner of things threaten your life and so on. You know, the first lady to boot, yeah, looking for trouble. Looking for trouble. Gloria Chester, Sonia Maseka. Sonia, how are you doing there? How are you doing in Maryland, Sonia? Randy Cole is here with us. Randy, Randy, Randy. How is Georgia, Randy? How is Georgia? Waveney Doris is with us as well. Neon Harding. Shereen Bates, good to see you folks on the live this morning. I think that's going to do it for us. At the end, folks, share the live before you go. Smash that emoji button we want to let you know too, folks, if you're heading into the city, you're heading into the city, looking after your documentation needs. You want to recommend the Alice of Collins firm. Right down there, Lama Hart Street, close to Waterloo Street, between Camp and Waterloo, but close to Waterloo Street, folks. The Callion Mall on the ground floor, you go in there. The experts... And all your documentation is you need a good commission of host staff David, a good justice of the peace. Touch base with them. Touch base with these guys. They'll give you the fixer up. Huh? They'll give you the fixer up. I gotta go down there myself. Before the week is out, gotta go down there myself. We recommend them highly, folks. We recommend them bigly. Bigly, good folks. 
Share the like before you go. Smash that emoji button. And remember to partner with us too. For I can, I can vex Jack Leo now. We can vex Jack Leo now, folks. We can't do this without you. We ain't gonna lie to you. We just can't, we just can't do this without you. We can't. So we're we'll available via Cash App, Zell, PayPal, MMG, MoneyGram, and Western Union as well, good folks. And we encourage you, we encourage you to contribute to our programs to keep us going, folks. Please and thank you as we continue to bring you folks valid and credible information. Yep, we got the QR codes too. Cash App and Zell and PayPal. And folks, we are able to receive your credit and debit cards as well now. Secure, 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 secure system. Hit us up on WhatsApp and we'll tell you how you can contribute. There are the QR codes. Hit us up on WhatsApp if you need more information. 627-6963. That's our number. 627-6963, folks. Hit us up on that WhatsApp and we can give you guys more guidance. That's our time, folks, for this morning. That's our program. It was a privilege being here with each and every one of you. Even though some of you are bad, so. Some of you are bad, so, folks. It's been a privilege being here with each and every one of you. Little Prack, Ingrid Edward, Margaret Nelson, <laughs> Debbie Collins, Ross Ricard, and all the other folks joining us this morning. It's been such a privilege being here with you. Take care. That's going to do it for us at this end. Share the line. Smash that emoji button, folks, and partner with us as well. Take good care, folks. Until, until, until our next podcast. Stay safe. Stay safe.